We have new details tonight on a second round of U.S. airstrikes in the Middle East. The U.S. today targeting Iranian-backed groups in Yemen. CBS 2's Darius Johnson is following the latest for us. And Darius, these new attacks come as tensions are rising following the death of those three American soldiers. Yes, Marie, indeed. Good evening to you. Iranian and Syrian officials say yesterday's airstrike killed nearly 40 people. And today's attacks by the U.S., according to officials, were meant to disrupt and degrade capabilities Houthis have used to attack and deter ships in the Red Sea. Tonight, new photos show the U.S. and U.K. airstrikes against Iranian-backed Houthi targets in Yemen. The strikes hit 36 different targets in 13 locations. This in addition to strikes against Houthi anti-cruise ship missiles in the Red Sea, which the U.S. says was in self-defense. The Houthis, for example, have been vying for power in the Yemen civil war for some time. And of course, they were struck today by the British and the Americans uh, in order to uh, try and keep the Red Sea open. The Red Sea is a vital part of global entry for trade and has been disrupted by Yemen military operations. This now the second attack this week. Friday's airstrikes across Iraq and Syria struck 85 targets linked to Iranian-backed militants. DePaul University history professor Tom Mikaitis says the U.S. is poking Iran, but is smart by not directly hitting targets inside Iran. What we're hitting are these uh, these militias that are tied to Iran that are loosely referred to as the axis of resistance. They're trained, equipped, uh, and, and so on by Iran, but it's not exactly the case that Iran dictates them uh, to them when to strike and exactly where. Friday's strikes were ordered by President Biden just hours after the bodies of three U.S. soldiers who were killed in a drone attack in Jordan were brought back to the U.S. It was a given the U.S. would attack. I think it's extremely fortunate they have not yet struck at inside Iran, which would be a far more serious escalation. Makaida says these attacks are now generating fear that actions could broaden tensions worlds away. What everyone's doing, holding their breath, is wondering whether Iran is going to respond. So far, its response has been relatively muted. As the situation only becomes more volatile, Makaida says the risk for escalation should be at the forefront. In order to get this to stop, you've got to make some effort to resolve the situation in Gaza itself. That's that's the core. And this round of attacks is not going to be the end of the story. One way or another, I fully expect um, these militia groups are going to respond. Meanwhile, President Biden said the U.S. will continue to respond at, quote, times and places of our choosing. The president of Iran has spoken out recently, stating they are not looking to get into a direct fight with the United States. However, he did not shy away from the fact that the U.S. could expect a response. We're live tonight in the control room. I'm Darius Johnson, CBS 2 News. Darius, thank you.